It's Monday, March 11th, as we record the iPhoneography podcast live on YouTube and uh, soon to be released on audio on uh, the Apple Podcasts app. My name is Greg McMillan, and I'm joined by my co-host, Dave Fodner. Hello, David. Greg, how's it going tonight? It's going pretty good. As you can see on the live stream, we have a guest with us tonight. It is Mr. Scott Baker. Yes. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Good. I do bad. Let's uh, you know, tell everybody a little bit about you so that in case uh, nobody's heard of you or seen you before, um, so they, they can probably have you know, <laughs> figure out who, they were, who you are. Uh, my name is Scott. I live on the east coast of Canada, fellow Canadian Yay. like Greg, <laughs> uh, yeah, Nova Scotia. And uh, I've been doing photography. Oh, geez, I don't know. Seriously? Well, I say seriously, but, you know, it, it's become more of a thing. Um, probably in the last three to five years, I would say, I've really started to uh, get into it and stuff the mobile photography. And uh Yeah. So really enjoying it. Great community. Cool. Um, so we basically met each other on uh, Shane Mawson's Bloody Legends group. And correct, uh, yeah. so and and we are ad admins on the Facebook group. So, you know, we, we know each other pretty good. Um, yeah. You know, we haven't met in person, but uh, I mean, I'm, the same goes with just about everybody I know in this field. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm stuck in little old Ontario. And Dave, you're way down in uh, by Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. We don't hold that against them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, you know, and, and of course, Shane, he's all the way across in Australia. So, I mean, if we were looking at him, he'd be upside down. But um, so, Shane, if you're watching, how you doing? Uh, but <laughs> in the chat, I see we got Dale Lotherington. He's from uh, the Gold Coast, I think, is it, Dale? From, uh, you know. The, the great continent of Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have Todd Weiner. Uh, he says, hello, guys. Hold on a minute at the Phoenix airport. Oh, getting ready to leave to go back to L.A. Oh, traveling. Um, that's got to be fun. I'd love um, to go to L.A. So anyway, um, yeah, we, we my thing says we've got seven people watching right now. So that's cool. Hopefully, hopefully more will chime in. But we're going to talk a bit tonight about a little anomaly that I think you first saw this, didn't didn't you, Scott? Dale. Oh, it was, it was Dale actually that saw it Dale. First? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, that that Dale saw then, and then it, it's kind of been kind of bleeding over into um. Well, Dale's from Newcastle, Australia. There you go. Um, it's kind of been bleeding over to the rest of us in our little uh, Bloody Legends admin group ab about this um anomaly that we're seeing in yeah. um. It's in raw files from the 5X camera or the 120 millimeter camera of the iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max. Uh, now, it, it has to be the Pro Max. The... Pardon? It'd have to be the Pro Max because the Pro's only got the three. Oh, yeah. The Pro's yeah. only got the three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wonder there if it go. does it in the Pro. No, I'm curious. Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, Dave, your wife, Ruth, she has the Pro Max, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, she has the right. Max. Uh, so we can't test that right now, but um, mm. but what it is is when you take a photo of you, you know like a, like a sunset or something with light uh, areas, either on. So if you're holding, I don't know if it's got to be a specific way that you're holding the it's phone. On. I would think. It's always on the right side. So if you have it, uh, well, depending on how you have it oriented, like if you're holding it vertically, it's always on that right side. Right. So, okay. So then if you, yeah. de depending on which way you tilt it horizontally, it'll be there on the top or bottom. Or bottom. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think most people turn it, Okay. you know, turn it to a 45 to the left so that the cameras are on the, like Dave's showing here. Okay. Uh, the cameras are on the top part of the frame, like in the upper left corner, I guess, of the, of the, of the mm -hmm. phone. Yeah. Um, and then it would be uh along the, the top of the picture. So it'd and be I'm like gonna... right here. The same yeah. the same size as the lenses, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna put some pictures up here as we're talking. And and for folks that are listening to the audio after the audio comes out, you'll be able to see these on your iPhone screen. And you're gonna see what we're talking about here. Now, this is a strange anomaly. I'm going to Share my screen. 
Where is it? There it is. And it's only after you upload to like a raw viewer, right? Or a processor or something, it gets processed. Because like in the gallery, it's not there. It's not until yeah. you yeah. uploaded it, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So there you can see that now I got these. These are screenshots that I got from Scott. Yeah. And this so, is um, just a picture of your ceiling. Slide. Yeah. Yeah. And you took this with even no, no, this apparently happens with any app that can shoot a raw file, whether it's a long exposure or or a still photo. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. This was I, I believe this was uh, on uh, single mode and uh, or it might have been just like um, one second. And I just clicked up and uh, but with reflex, um, the pro app, just a single shot. It's uh, yeah, it's there. Right. Uh, now, this is a halide shot, yeah. um, a raw shot from halide. You can see it along the right-hand side. This is a reflex raw shot. There's yep. the same thing. And there yes. is the uh, re-exposed shot. Now, yep. in order to see this, you, you, you wouldn't see it unless you made the adjustment that we see on the screen here. And it's the dehaze slider. In Lightroom yeah. Mobile, and you you crank it up to you know to a higher value, and that's when it starts to appear. Yeah, you can and, kind of notice it just a little bit, and then like as soon as you crank that dehaze, it's yeah very evident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like because the, the this one here from even longer that I've got on the screen right now, that's what we'll be showing on the audio um, in the podcast app when when people listen to this because it's really prevalent on this one and yeah. th the funny thing is is your your dehaze isn't even up as high as the other ones were generally yeah no you yeah. know it's only 65 out of a out of a 99 setting yeah but it might this be is so light. strange what's that Scott? yeah it, oh i was just gonna say it might have just been different lighting when i took the photo like uh, i was literally yeah. laying on the couch looking straight up in the air and yeah <laughs> so somebody yeah. might put a light on but yeah Could be, it's yeah. It's and like I said, it's as you got to upload it to like Adobe or Darkroom or Snapseed or one of these raw viewers, and then like you can literally watch it in the gallery as you upload it. You're looking at your phone, and then poof, it like lights up that one side. Now, I didn't see it in Darkroom or Raw Power, but I did okay. see it in Snapseed and Lightroom Mobile. Okay, I don't have um, Darkroom to test it, but I thought, uh, Somebody said it was in dark like room. Dark room, too. dark room doesn't have a dehaze slider, but it does have a clarify slider or a clarity right. slider. However, I, I tried that clarity slider and it didn't didn't show up. So I'm wondering if you know some um raw editors. I mean, I guess they have different algorithms, maybe. I don't know. Um, but Lightroom, it's the king, I think, of of raw editors. Yeah um in that respect because you know it's a it's a pretty big company and there's a lot of people behind it and everything else now yeah. shane mostyn he reached out to russell brown did he not he did yes yeah yeah he sent uh him some examples and stuff like that of it yeah yeah and i don't think he's heard back though um and just today you contacted sebastian dewitt from halide on twitter correct or x yeah Yep. And um, and so what did he say? He seemed to think it was something maybe in the, the Apple pipeline with that camera, those lenses, or that processing of the raw file. And uh, just they haven't really either updated things. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means. <laughs> but uh, yeah, his, basically Apple hasn't really... My take was Apple really hasn't updated things on their end to to uh, to do it because it's raw, not pro raw, because it only happens with raw. Yeah, yeah, you don't see it in in uh, pro raw. Um, nope. So I mean, I'm quite doubtful, but I'm hoping Apple listens to this podcast. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and and I mean, I'll, hopefully they could, you know. They need to be aware of it anyway, because it's mm -hmm. really weird. It only happens on the five X. Yeah. Um, uh, Dave, I mean, you don't you don't shoot raw 
as a no. rule. So no, so I have not experienced this. My question is, if you go beyond five x, like five, even five point one, five point two x, does oh. it still happen, or is it only exactly at five? Good, That's question. A good question. And I'm assuming at four point nine, it wouldn't happen. I would think Dale, not, you need to check I'm, this because that's the <laughs> <laughs> that's the uh, you know that's what I love about you, Dave. You, you're you may not use raw, <laughs> but you got these ideas. Like that's the engineering coming out of you, <laughs> thinking outside the box. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, just trying to narrow it down in terms of, like I said, it's 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 only on the five X in the certain situation. So, is there a problem with the whole prismatic? Yeah. You know, the, yeah, the like, fact that the light hitting up. the way this pr is that causing the issue, or is it the fact it's happening every? It looks like it's in every. It's consistent in the position. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So but again, it's only when you upload it to, like, if you look in your Apple Gallery at it or Google Photos, I use that. Fine. It's not there. Perfectly there. As soon as you hit it to upload to Adobe or one of these other raw editors. Yeah. And you like you it's said, it's, it's 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 raw. It's not pro raw, right? Right. So right. it may be something. And me, I'm just spitballing here. It could be something physical, the way mm -hmm. the light because it isn't a periscope lens, right? Yep. Like Samsung uses, so it hit taking multiple reflections going on here. But I could see Apple putting, you know, testing and saying, "Oh, there's an issue here, but we'll fix it. We can fix this in the That's software." Something. In the pro raw built in, you know, on the chip, they can do processing as part of pro raw, and they can make some adjustments to make it look good. You know, the mm. Apple Magic dust, but raw doesn't have that, right? And yeah. <sighs> oh, Dale brings up a good good point. All the third party apps don't allow allow Zoom. So you can't use like in like oh. reflex, right? You're stuck at that five X. You can't go past it and stuff. Yeah, you can with reflex. Oh, can can you? Okay. Yep. Just pinch in in pin, raw pinch too. Out. Oh, in raw. That's a good question. That's a good question. I'm not sure. I'm gonna say maybe mm. not. Um. I don't, have reflex, this, I don't right? have reflex downloaded either. Yeah, the, 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 wor the worst part about this right now is Scott and I are both using our phones <laughs> as cameras. <laughs> yeah, I can't try it. <laughs> right. But uh, you could bet your sweet patootie we're going to be trying this after we get, get done yeah, with Maurice, this. Oh, yeah. Maurice is saying that uh, it can use that, but he's not. But that's on the 14 Pro Max. So that's only up to the 3X. That's not the 5X. Yeah. Dale okay, says, don't Dale's our guinea pig. He it. says uh, Reflex does not support Zoom. So Dale, I, I assume that's in RAW. Um, yeah. But in, in maybe like you can zoom. Maybe what you're talking about is like going from the like you zoom from the ultra wide to the regular, then to the five X. Like it goes like you, that. You you can't do the the smooth zoom. Yeah, you can say you can switch between the lenses. You can do a hard switch, but you really yeah. can't do a zoom. Because the zoom, you know, we, we know Apple, when they do zoom, if you're in between lenses, it interpolates multiple lenses to get you that image. All seven. Right. Incredible. <laughs> but I know I had I had my phone set up to shoot, uh, take a shot of the moon, and I was able to pinch out to zoom, like right up to uh, 25x or whatever the capability is of that camera. Um, in, so in, I don't know. Now, were you using... Raw, pro raw. That's a good question. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, or, or even or even height max. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not sure, um, but it was definitely in reflex. Hmm. Because raw ah. and pro raw won't uh, zoom, but non raw format formats can zoom. Yeah. Okay, I must have had it in height max or whatever. Yeah. Turn you okay. Apple. Darn you, Apple! Yeah. Um. So I mean, this is this is an interesting issue. Um. And, and I would say I would say it definitely is an edge case. Well, yeah. I mean, you're shooting in non-Apple. You're shooting in regular RAW, not Pro RAW, which is, which is better RAW. 
than Pro Raw, <laughs> but not for Apple. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, as we say about you know the, the Apple ninety ninety rule, is it good for ninety percent of the people ninety percent of the time? How yeah. many people are actually shooting in Raw? Very few. Very few, I and. That. I imagine most of the people who do shoot in RAW are probably shooting in the Apple Pro RAW and not yeah. regular RAW because you don't want to do, you know, if you're coming from a DSLR and you're used to shooting or if you're used to working in RAW and working in Lightroom and doing all the different adjustments, that's one thing. But just sheer volume, most people aren't coming from there. Yeah, yeah, you know? I agree. And yeah. so hopefully Apple, you know, even if it doesn't hit the volume, it's showing something's going on that isn't right. Right. So they, hopefully they look at it because it could be an underlying issue. Yeah. And especially since if they do, as the rumors suggest, the 5X will migrate, migrate down to the pro, the, the smaller pro next year right so it isn't yeah. just won't be the pro max so it'll be the regular pro and the non-pro will still have the ultra wide and the normal yeah i just hope it doesn't get turned into the you're holding it wrong type things where you're shooting oh. it wrong like <laughs> and they don't do anything about it <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, it's it's uh, it's a weird one. I mean, it, and it it has all of us puzzled. That's for sure. Any of us that are that are experiencing it. Yeah. Um, you know, but I'm glad we had this conversation about it because, yeah. you know, Dave, with your input especially, because I mean, you you're kind of thinking outside the box here because you don't shoot in Rob, but yet you're so that that that's forcing you to ask these questions about, yeah. you know, the zoom level and all this stuff and. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the Tetra Prism thing, it's kind of got me thinking, um, you know, is it, uh, is it an anomaly with the Tetra Prism? Uh, who knows, uh, you know, who knows what's happening with the, the light inside of that thing? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's weird. It's weird. When you start uh, bending things multi, and I got to figure the main re the straight periscope lens, like samsung uses would be a simpler design in the pet in the tetrahedron yeah. tetra prism it's just a simpler design it takes up more space not a yeah. lot more space but more space so yeah. that's why you know samsung going with the more i hate to say durable that's not the right term but the the, the more the more straightforward answer yeah. to the same problem and notice that samsung is no longer um, they got rid of their 10x lens. They're going back. They went to a 5x in the latest one. They just doubled the um, the Probably megapixels. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm going to show you uh, you know some real world examples of what how, what this does to your images. <laughs> you can see on one of Scott's photos here of a sunset. It's a long exposure. Um, I was like, what is that on the screen? I didn't see that. Oh, that's your mouse cursor. <laughs> That's what your mo your most pointer there. I seen something oh, there. on the screen. Okay. I was like, "What was <laughs> I'll that?" I don't remember way. seeing that. In the photo. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Scott, tell us you know a, a little bit about this picture with regards to the um, you know the anomaly that we see across the top. What I'll do is with my most pointer, I will highlight that. It's yeah. right along here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a I believe a one minute. Might have been a one minute, one and a half minute, uh, long exposure, using even longer. Um, mm. And uh, I'm at the local beach and you get the waves coming in on on the set of rocks and stuff. I love the 5X. The look it gives, like, it, I, I just really, really like the look. And this is why I'm really bummed about this is because I've found myself using the 5X. I think almost all the photos I sent you, Greg, tonight, mm -hmm. um, we're taking with the five X cause it's just, I'm just finding that it's just composure wise. It, it's it, yeah. I'm just really, really enjoying it and stuff like that. And so having this band across the top, mm. it's, it's uh, yeah, it's um, annoying, but uh, yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful sunset. It was uh, 
the sun was coming down and clouds were looking nice and stuff. But it, it just gave me this up in the clouds feeling like with the, the smooth mm-hmm. water and stuff. And, and uh, you're up on a mountain or something like looking over at the other peaks. And yeah, that mm-hmm. was kind of the, the idea behind, behind this as I was taking it. It's like, yeah, just. Yeah. yeah. And in, in, then in this next image, it's even more prevalent. Yeah. Mm, Good. It's a darker, darker clouds. Yeah. 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 So and it was a bit the, lower there, clouds, a bit darker. There's very little you can do to get rid of that. Um, I was going through some images today that I took yesterday at a waterfall and I took uh, three or four uh, of the top of the falls and, and we're going to see one later when we look at our recent photos. Um, and in, the anomaly was there, but it was only in the light part of the waterfall. Yeah. There's trees up and above at the top of the frame. You won't see them there. You won't see yeah. this issue there because it's too busy. The The image is too busy there. This really shows up in in parts of a, of an image that are, you know, very um, uh, Darker kind of and... a solid background yeah. or whatever. Like, like the, and the, guy, right? the other weird thing is that it's not consistent. It isn't like a, a broken pixel or something where you see like a solid no. line. It, yeah. it, it's it's brighter, at least on the image on the screen, it's brighter on the left side and kind of, if you only looked at like the right. Eight, I agree. Yeah. It yeah. would be very hard to see it there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But hmm. in, in my image, I was able to fix it with, <laughs> excuse me, with a lot of masking. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Probably four or five different masks, little radial masks, where I, I would put a real long, skinny, like um, mm-hmm. radial mask on. And then... Yeah you know, just play with the contrast or the brightness, just w- whatever direction I had to go to kind of get rid of that. And it worked, yeah. you know, I was able to salvage that image, but to do it on one, like, like Scott's picture here, boy, oh boy, I just don't know. Yeah. You could try and clone possible. it and, and maybe, but like there's such gradient <laughs> changes that. Yeah. Um, it would, it would look weird. <laughs> it would just, that would just look weird. Agreed. You'd almost have to just crop it out. Like mm-hmm. if you really want to, uh, to get it get rid of it agreed pretty yeah. much yeah. Yeah. yeah so i mean I, going forward you almost have to kind of plan your shot that way you know mm, you might have to like yeah like if i would have flipped well, the phone here maybe having the line at the bottom maybe that might have been with it was a little bit more busier maybe yeah you well, know i mean that's the other thing i'd be interested if you took a picture yeah flip the phone and took the same picture mm-hmm Oh yeah. Would yeah. would it would it still be on top or would it flip to the bottom? It would it would flip to the bottom. It would flip to the bottom. Okay. Yeah, because if you I know if you do the the um like the vertical, it's it's yeah. on the side and stuff like that. Mm, so it's point. always yeah. always on that right side. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> anybody that that sees this video, <clears throat> excuse me, or or listens to the audio later, if you know what it could be. Let us know if um, if you know somebody at Apple. Hey, you know what? Guess what? Oh, this is a good one. I just so the um, uh, Filmic Pro oh, with all that stuff that went on there. I just happened to know Christopher Cohen, who was one of the uh, co-founders of that app. Mm, before they he got just taken got over, a job at Apple in the camera department mm. really yes why didn't i think of this earlier you had one we and i even asked this for earlier. the audio listeners who has an apple that's me smacking I even my said head to you greg get <laughs> yes. hold of your apple contact but it's he's been. so fresh there that i didn't i, <laughs> I didn't totally even think about, about him <clears throat> so christopher if you're listening to this <laughs> I, i'm gonna reach out to him i will i will reach out to him i'll i'll send him these samples and um you know so he's weird. he's very new with apple he's very new there but uh it'll be interesting to see if um you know if maybe he can come mm. up with something maybe he can you know poke around a little bit and uh may- maybe come to some kind of a solution but that's mm. um, so you're yeah. saying it it doesn't happen in the pro raw no correct hmm. 
So, I mean, I, I hate to say it this way, but a workaround other than cropping is how much is the difference you notice between raw and pro raw in terms of the image quality and how you like it? Well, the issue or, is... Or, or is Apple hitting too much of the Apple in between? No. So for myself, I do a lot of long exposure stuff. So I have to use yeah. these have to use re-exposed raw. even longer right. and stuff right. like that, that, that. Now, I can shoot in those in non-raw. I believe there's the option to, to use a JPEG or maybe TIFF file format um so that might be an option to to see if it uh if it shows up in those because i've only ever shot in raw and and uh and done it but um yeah so that's why i don't use the Mm. the pro raw Hmm. i was trying to think of (laughs) like (laughs) even basic workaround types like i said greg has the easiest just plan let's say plan the top you know, a little yeah. bit of the image you're going to be throwing away, but yeah. that also messes up the composition. in a way the, the composition, unless you're willing to crop this way, not just crop, yeah. no, not, not just chop off the top, you're, but you're also kind of yeah. in to keep yeah, the same almost, aspect ratio. You're yeah. almost looking at going to like a 16 by nine after the crop. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I don't know. Like it, or, it's disappointing. Or, like I said, Oh no. Agreed. You shouldn't have to. Right. No. No, you should not have to. But it's kind of like when you use the, at least when I use the ultra wide, I'm assuming that there's a a border around the outside, which I'm going to have to throw away because of lens distortion. Yeah. So you almost have to think about that with the 5Xs. Think, okay, I'm going to have for right now a border where I'm Mm going to throw it away. Yeah. It's just such a tight crop anyway. Yeah. Usually with the 5X. Especially with the 5X. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's mm. uh, yeah, it's not simple, but we'll get to the bottom of mm. it. Yes, yes, we will somehow. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, I'm also thinking it's one of these things that it's a it's a minority of a minority, but mm-hmm. it's a high end minority. It's it's the people Apple really want to hit because if you want to have these score like Scott, that was a the picture's gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, even with the banding, you know, just because it's in the cloud, people may not notice it unless you point it out. That's that's one thing. Like, and honestly, <laughs> I'd never noticed it at all, almost until I think Dale pointed it out, and then to one of Shane's photos, he asked, and then it's like, mm-hmm. "Oh, did you notice that?" And I, it was a different photo, and I was like, "No, I didn't see it." It's like I don't have it. And it's like, "Oh my god, I do! There it is!" And it's like, <laughs> and now and you now can't, can't unsee it. See it. <laughs> That's the thing; you can't unsee it. Yeah. No, but but those yeah. are the pictures that Apple wants out there. Yeah, because you want to say, "This was taken with an iPhone." Mm-hmm. You know, those those high quality is like. Wait a minute, you took that with a phone and not a, you know, $4,000 camera lens combination and have to have the X, uh, you know, not saying Canadian, not money, Canadian money, it's almost a $4,000 camera. <laughs> well, that, yeah, yeah, okay. Very true. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, so let, let's uh, just jump real quick to the the chat here. There's not not a ton of activity, but we got. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Will sorry Newcomb. to hear. Sorry to hear about Will being in bed day five with COVID. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. So you know, we'll be thinking about you, Will. Thanks for thanks for tuning mm. in. Um, mm. You know, it, it's it's an awful thing. Um, but uh, yeah, we got Maurice, we got uh, Devo. Devo is another. Devo, Devo is another one in the uh, Bloody Legends um, admin group, <clears throat> and he's in the he's UK. Probably at a pub, so he's probably at a pub. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Either that, or he just shut off his live stream for his gaming. Maybe, yeah. You know, say he was up there it, for it, over three hours the other night. He had a, like a three and a half hour YouTube video that he streamed. That's crazy. Let's say time time in um the UK right now it's 1 30 in the morning. Yeah. So he's in a pub. So he's in a pub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh well, you know, this this uh th- this was a pretty good conversation about this problem, this yeah. issue. Um uh 
I think is one that needs to be had, uh, mm -hmm. not just by us, but it needs to be had by people at Apple. And yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything that the developers could do because they're at the mercy of the sensor and, and the way the camera works. So yeah. uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I am going to get a hold of Chris Cohen and see if there's anything that he can do to look into it or whatever. Um, uh, kind of talking uh, about employees. I seen something online the other day. How many people worked on the camera at Apple? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it's two or 3,000. Yeah, yeah, it's somebody definitely... Said, yeah. Somebody said 800, and uh, it was close to 900 people or something like that worked on just the camera alone. Like, yeah. that's bananas. Yeah, like, that is I can't, crazy. I, I can't wrap my head around that. That many people working on, on that. Like, how yeah, does... I see, I, I, you know what? I see that from Petapixel. 800. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's what I it was. was yeah, Petapixel. Board. I was reading it in that or <laughs> yeah. something. Yeah. Well, no, though, but that's from 2015. Oh, my God. That's 2015. Okay. Oh, that's wow. 2015. Jesus. Yeah, I'm seeing that from multiple things saying 2015. So, okay. yeah. There's probably I'm, more. Yeah, it's got to be. Well, and also, it's just not the people working on the physical camera. It's yeah. the software people working on the camera. It's the yeah. integration with the sensor and the lenses and the stuff on the chips. You know, they're yeah. customized chips. So there's chip people who are yeah. writing hardwired code into the chip for the camera. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's kind of hard to say how many people are working on a particular part. Yeah. Because yeah, that's true. It, 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 especially in the last few of them, everything's so built in and integrated now. Yeah. That, oh, yeah, well, to do the video processing, you need the special chip that's part of the system on a chip. So that needs to write to this and that needs to write to the operating system. So all these engineers have to work together. Yeah, it, it must be. I, I can only imagine how the workflow like in there, like, cause, like, how would you combine that? You know what I mean? To, you know, one person working on this, who's working on that, who's working on this, and then have all that integrate so well. I just can't imagine. Yeah, yeah it's, it, well, you know, they're, they're one of the biggest companies in the world. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they, they have... I don't know how many employees worldwide. I, I thought I heard somewhere it was like 18,000. Um, but I mean, you know, they're, they're fighting with Microsoft now to see who's the uh, the most valuable company. Um, yeah. I know a while ago, Microsoft surpassed them a little bit, um, but it's been kind of back and forth, I think. Yeah, because um, they were at one time, weren't they the most valuable? I thought Apple was. Yeah, they were. Oh, they, yeah, they're yeah, like sure. the top so many. You know yeah. what? I'm going to look that up real quick here. You look it up, Dave. Yep. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Where is it? This, this is different being on this side. Usually in, in Shane's podcast, I'm the one looking things up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Dave's quite okay, proficient. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Companies, Microsoft is the largest at $3 trillion. Uh, Apple is second at 2.66. Let's see if you can guess who's third, fourth, and fifth. Oh, third, fourth, one should two, two of the three should not be a shock. Tesla? <laughs> oh God, no! <laughs> <laughs> they they, uh, they they have like went straight downhill recently. That's true. They did. I I couldn't even begin to guess. Number three is Amazon. Nvidia. Nvidia. Oh, oh yes, oh, really? because of huge... all the chips being used for AI. Yeah. Number four is Sa Saudi Aramco, or Amer yeah Aramco, the oil company owned by the Saudi government. Yeah, they've got banners all over the Formula One racetracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And number five is Amazon. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Fo followed by Google and then um, Meta. Damn Meta. Hmm. Yeah, and then Ber Berkshire Hathaway, which you know they own everything. Uh, yeah. Eli Lilly, the pharmaceutical, and then at number ten, TSMC. Ah, oh, chip makers in uh, the chip Taiwan. maker mainly for Apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So mm. it Walmart sixteen. 
Yeah, a Tesla uh, Tesla is not even close to anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll jump in the chat here real quick. Uh, yep. Devo says six hours on. I was very very drunk. LOL. That must have been oh, the yeah. long live stream I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will Newcomb, Greg, great lighting as usual. Thanks, Will. I do try. <laughs> Hopefully, I sound as good as it looks. Um, uh, Maurice ba Backley, Backley or Bakley? I'm gonna say Backley. Um, I jumped off for a minute lighting. to put the kids to bed, so you might not have discussed this. But I imagine the issue is consistent every time you could do the brightness correction on a neutral gray image. And uh, he says, then make it a, make that a preset. I built some presets to take out chromatic aberrations from external lenses so I didn't have to find the exact purple color to extract each time. That's interesting. That would be, yeah, to come up with a preset. Hmm. hmm. Maybe something to experiment with, yep. Yeah. Uh, Dale says, now Apple has crossed the line. Hashtag line gate. Line <laughs> gate <LOL. yeah. laughs> That's perfect. Yes, line it's gate. incredible. Two times. <clears throat> that is incredible. Uh, <laughs> um, so, I mean, um, you know, I, I, like I say, I, I'm glad we had this conversation. It's a, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a conversation that needs to be had by, by us, by Apple, by whoever. Yeah. And um, I think the more people that get out there and hear about it, um, or the more people that find out about it, the more people that can get, you know, looking for some kind of a resolution to this because it yeah. is downright annoying for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, so now what we'll do is we will go to um, our recent photos. And so now usually we have, uh, Dave, uh, Dave puts three and I put three, but now that, because Scott's here, we all, we're all going to do two each and let me just bring these up and then I'll share the screen. If I can just find it. There it is. And we're going to start with you, Scott. Ooh. Where should I go? With this one here. Ah. That was at the same beach that I uh, took the other photos of. Different day, though. Um, tide was a lot lower here. This photo is something I've wanted to try and do for a while. And I've seen Andy Green do it. Andy Green is a huge inspiration for me. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, he is so talented. And, uh, and so I reached out to him. I said, you know, these are the settings I'm looking to try in in uh, with the Reflex Pro app. Um, I don't think you can do it in Halide. Uh, I looked at their app a little bit today, and and so and I don't know if you can do it in even longer with their single shutter mode. Um, but um, yeah, I reached out to Andy. He gave me some pointers and stuff, and the tide was going out, and it just. Um, yeah, I was really happy. I took probably that day, I think it was 302 photos. And because, yeah, and because I was standing there and as the tide's going out and literally just click, 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 trying to get the perfect, you know, with the white, the wash going out and stuff like that and the waves and everything because it's not consistent and stuff. So, I was tapping away, <laughs> trying different things. Um, yeah. I'm bad. I don't know if you can call it bad or good for it, but uh, the other night when I went out uh, for the sunset photos, 270 some photos. Cause again, wow. I'm sitting there and I'm clicking and clicking and clicking, trying to get that perfect wave uh, tide combination kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so this, this was one of my favorites cause it just, yeah, I, I, very happy with this photo and stuff. Yeah. Um, so when, as you shot this, the water was on its way out. Correct. Yeah. 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 It had come in and I, then, yeah, I just saw, took a bunch of shots as it was going out and stuff. Yeah. I saw a video on YouTube by a photographer and it might have been Michael Shane Bloom, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Mm -hmm. But he said, that's the time to do it is when the water's receding. Yeah. Not yeah. coming in. Um, correct yeah yeah, yeah. you got to get it because it, it the way it just brings it out and and you can just get the right like a little bit of white cap on it that it leaves those white streaks and uh i loved it hit that one spot in the corner there where it just 
twirled around and stuff and yeah uh, mm -hmm. oh that's just beautiful beautiful yeah, yeah i was really happy i got that photo yeah now did you use a, a an nd filter i think i'm trying to think on that i think i might have had a five stop nd on this one yeah. that's not the one you dropped in the water that was the one I dropped in the water, but was it? You might as yeah. well tell that story too. Real quick. <laughs> so I've got these Ulanzi uh, MagSafe um, uh, filter mounts. So it clips on the back of your phone and then it folds over. Shane did a video on it and uh, folds over and you can magnetically attach uh, lenses. And so I got the variable ND filter. And so I'm sitting there on, on was it Sunday, Saturday? And uh, I'm sitting on this rock and the waves are just beating in, beating in and stuff like that. And I don't know if it was a particular wave or something, but I just moved a little bit and mm -hmm. the lens popped off and it went bing, bing, bing and oh, rolled oh, down oh. off the rock into the, the ocean. <laughs> oh. So I get up and I'm looking for it and I can see where it is. And then the waves are beating in and it's moving around. It wasn't very deep. It was only like maybe like that deep or something like that. But every time the wave came in and it was cold water. <laughs> so <laughs> it was, uh, I, f I fished it out, but I think it does have a couple scratches. I don't know how that's going to affect the, uh, the uh, use of it and stuff, but uh, yeah. It might neutralize that line. It might. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I, yeah, I did I, send you Lanzi a uh, email today saying, listen, the magnets on this aren't as strong. Like, cause Shane says his is pretty good and stuff like that. But like, yeah. it, I don't know if I, I have a, um, uh, I forget the brand, but a different one that's magnetic and a, a CPL and they stick better. So I don't know something. Mm. So they, they asked for a video. I took a little video showing them how it just basically falls off and uh, I haven't got a reply yet, but hopefully maybe I got a, a, a dud one, but yeah. And you, you had it on a case. Yes. Or yes. No? Um, well, I have the same art case with the screw in, but since this is a, a magnetic thing, it just, yeah, just flips over. So it's a mag safe case. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well then it should have been fine. So yeah. may maybe maybe yeah, it's it's this. not the magnet to the case. That's perfect. Like that's plenty strong. It's just oh, the yeah. the lens to the other side that uh, mm. that it doesn't work okay. well. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely, mm. definitely could you know you can have a bad magnet or you know maybe it was cut a little thinner than they yeah. wanted to type thing. Yeah. yeah, that could be. Yeah, yeah. One thing I love about the photo is the fact that the sky is not consistent all the way across. Yeah, yeah. It was clouding you know? in mm -hmm. as, as as it got uh, darker and stuff like that. And I think that adds to it a little bit yeah. and, and stuff, yeah. But I do like yeah. the fact it's clear behind the rocks. Or yeah. not clear, but that you can see sky and not clouds yeah. behind the rocks. So you get that contrast yeah. of, of the gold behind the rocks versus where... I think if if the clouds were switched, yeah. it wouldn't stick out as well. Yeah, I yeah, agree. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the, the rocks, there's a lot of uh, you know texture and, mm -hmm. and edges and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Uh, a lot of seaweed on that's them. The, that's the the busiest mm -hmm. part of the frame. Yeah, everything else is rather smooth looking in, in comparison, and you know it, it's just like a, um, you know roughness and smoothness i don't know what the word i'm looking for is juxt juxtaposition maybe or something um mm. but it, it's really cool it, it, you know it's um and, and okay so sense of scale scott how big how high would those rocks be oh there's would, um probably uh, like five six feet or something yeah the ones further out are probably closer to eight or ten feet and stuff okay if not more so yeah yeah well, that's a that's a cool shot. That is really cool. Thank you. So, Dave. Okay. Now, this was one where I annoyed Ruth because <laughs> we were driving home, and it, it just the way that the clouds hit, you know, they just a little bit of patchiness with the sky popping through, yeah. but just the symmetry with the with the houses on either side. The leading lines going straight down, yeah. and I just I said, "Give me your phone, hun." <laughs> this was on her phone. This was on her phone, and 
Um, so this is her 15 Pro Max. I said, give me your phone. And I took a vertical and a horizontal picture. I posted both to the group. And I, I like it's just one of those things where it just kind of caught my eye just going down the road. And like I said, the sim- this is a new-ish development in one of the towns close by. And just how, you know, this is something you don't get in Pittsburgh, straight lines on roads. We don't oh, get that yeah, very yeah. often. Yeah, you it's know. pretty flat too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this used to be a steel mill. Oh, okay. Yeah, this oh. is a, this is an old steel mill area down in Oakmont that the mill shut down in the early 90s or mid 90s. And they just graded it out and made all these townhouses and homes and just hundreds and thousands of them down there. I have to say that is the greenest spring grass I've ever seen. Yeah. Well, that's the area. I mean, well, it's one of the, it's a development. So, you know, the, 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 uh, the developer owner of it, you know, they take care of all the lawn work with HOAs and all that other fun stuff, which I don't have here, but they do there because these are expensive homes. Um, Yeah. So yeah, they do all the green. You figured this is taken in early March. You know, mm-hmm. it, it nothing. I mean, not not much is green here naturally. Nothing's green March. here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we don't have as much white as you guys do, but <laughs> well, we've lost all ours. Ours is gone too. <laughs> uh, but now, I, like I said, I, now, one thing I do appreciate about this development is they do have sidewalks yeah. where like for a while there, no one was putting in sidewalks to make it walkable. So at least it's walkable. Yeah. And like I said, I just loved how it almost looks like you took like a, for the houses going down past the intersection, it's almost like a mirror image. Oh yeah. The symmetry yeah. is really cool. Yeah. 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 And the contrast, the sky between mm-hmm. the houses. Yeah. Beautiful photo, yeah. And I did bump that up. So the original photo, as is, the sky turned out a little cloud. wasn't as you didn't see as much of the detail in the sky when I first took it. Right. So I did bump that up a little bit there. Yeah. Now the other thing that interests me is on the left side you've got a big tree. On the right side you got a big house. Mm. So it's almost like, you know. It takes a tree to make a house, right? In the, in the grand scheme of things, mm-hmm. it's it's funny how you see, um, you know, the product before and the product after kind of sort of thing. Uh, yep. You know, the, the the tree and then the house. Mm-hmm. It's a, I don't know. It, it may be a silly way to think, but, um, yeah. but it, but I like too that the that the, you've got the the street. You're looking right down the center of it. And, yeah, it just um, draws you right in. It does. Mm-hmm. It's it's almost like a Stanley Kubrick thing, and. Yeah. Um, um, you know, it, it's just a well, well shot image. It's a good, a good find, and I'm glad you bugged Ruth to uh, get the shot. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So next, we will go to this one here. Um, now, this is the one I was talking about earlier. Uh, for those watching live, <laughs> right here, sorry, is where I had to fix it because that's where that anomaly would have shown up. Yeah. So it took me, like I say, mm. about four or five different attempts with a, a, a small radial um, mask to play with the, you know, the contrast or the highlights or whatever it took. I tried different things until it looked right to, um, to, to get rid of that line. But this is with re-expose and it was, I want to say maybe a half a second or so, okay. or, or I'm, I'm not sure. I forget exactly how long it was. Um, but this is just the top of the waterfall. And, and you know, there's trees up top. I call this one under the tree and over the, under the tree and over the top. That's the title I gave it on Instagram. Because uh, the water comes underneath this tree that's kind of growing yeah. out over the water. And then uh, just comes down over the top of the escarpment. This is the Niagara escarpment. Um little trivia the Niagara Scarpet runs from the top of the Bruce Peninsula 
uh, up at a, from a little town called Tobamori, and it runs all the way down the peninsula right through Owen Sound, the town I live in, and works its way right down to Niagara Falls. And yeah. there's people that have hiked the Bruce Trail that goes the whole length of it. Um, mm. Some people have hiked the whole trail multiple times in their lives, uh, and it, it takes a long time to do the whole thing. Some people have probably done it in the same year, but other people take years to do it. But anyway, um, you know, and I had to, I had to really play with the, uh, the exposure, like in Lightroom of the tree trunk down mm -hmm. here where the roots and stuff are to get yeah. it to show up. Cause it was pretty dark underneath there, but I, I think I got away with it to the point where it looks somewhat natural. Yeah. No, and... that looks really nice. Is mm -hmm. it snowing then? Yeah, I was just gonna say. Yeah, it looks like you can get a little fire. bit. Yeah, that uh, that adds to it. I find that's just add a little more texture to it and stuff. Um, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and and I think there's you know when you do a long exposure of waterfalls, if you can if you can get away with it without that braided look, I yeah. think the shorter the exposure, the better. Um, had it been like a thirty second exposure. There would there wouldn't have been much texture and detail in the water, and there's a, of course a fine I use the clarity and what's that? I, I was going to say there's like a fine point, like if you can get it, uh, you know, just right, it's it's uh, to avoid the braiding. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, mm. You know, with something like reheld, minimum yeah. ten to fifteen seconds to to, yeah. get, to get rid of that braiding. You have to yeah. you have to let it work you know, to fill it all in and then you don't see it. But if you go like seven seconds or whatever, you're still going to see a little bit of it, I think. But um, uh, no, I, I just, you know, I've been watching photographers on YouTube, like Gavin Hardcastle is probably one of my favorites. Um, yeah. His long exposures of waterfalls are generally half a second, yeah. quarter second. You know, they're not very long. Now he's not shooting yeah. with a phone. So no, He's not going to get the braiding no matter what you do, I guess. But, mm. um, but it's it's it, it's challenging. I mean, I don't know how many pictures I took that day. It wasn't no three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Try but, harder uh, then. <laughs> um, but but it was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, no, that definitely it's a beautiful photo. And this is the five X, so it's it's I, I love yeah. that camera. Like it's just the perspective that it gives you. Um, it's yeah, I really like it. Yeah, thanks. And I really like this one. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so this is down, um, this is like probably 30 seconds from my host. Um, mm. You can't see it. I, my host is basically on the right side of the photo in behind those trees, like uh, oh, okay. um, around there. Um but uh, yeah, it was a long day at work and I needed some nice quiet time. And uh, so I stopped uh, on my way home and we have this beautiful brook that runs through and uh, um, tide was low. So I, again, I used the 5X on this one and these rocks were out there. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, I think this was maybe a, I want to say maybe 45 seconds with even longer. I think I used even longer for this one, and um, yeah, it was uh, it was nice. I, I I really liked the way the the um, I think I sent this photo, but it was between this one and a different one when yep. I took it or that night. <laughs> yeah, because I had the tripod lower um, for this shot, so everything was more on one focal plane. Or I had it, and then I raised it up, and I want, thought maybe it would fill the better lower part of the picture and stuff like that but i find yeah uh, i took your advice and and uh i think it, it really sets it off on this one yeah yeah because before like the other the other one with the tripod higher there was a lot more negative space in between the the the, the reflection yeah. of the tree line and the rocks so if you yeah. could picture uh basically the rocks lower in the frame with and then a lot of blank space here um uh, i i think by going lower like this shot is it compresses everything a little better and yeah you know it just it just takes all that negative space out of it um yeah. for me it worked it, it, it really yeah. worked and um i agree 
you know, I, and I like the edit. I really like the edit on it. Uh, was there any Thank presets you. used or anything for this? Um, I don't think I used a preset on this one. Um, just played with the sliders and until I got it how I, I liked it. It was a foggy day. It was like, uh, but we had a little bit of sun starting to come through. So the sky was getting a little whiter, a little brighter and stuff. And uh, little hints of sunlight, like for the rocks and stuff like that. Like you can kind of see on, on the middle one there. It was mm -hmm. it was just, just a little bit of sun coming out, but it was still a, a dreary day kind of thing. So um, I kind of kept it cooler, kept it in that mood and, and, and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, cool. What do you think, Dave? No, agreed. And I love the reflection of the rocks too. Yeah. That, adds, yeah. that adds just, like you said, in terms of filling the space having the reflection and it's so the reflection even though there's there's a bit of a you know it's not crisp like a mirror but it's so the, the reflection itself is crisp and including the reflection of the trees yeah you know that that fills it in where you're not just having rocks with light color around it but you're having spaces and a framing to it right yeah 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 yeah, yeah it's very cool that that's something I could see that on a wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's something else we were doing. Well, I didn't do it yet, but um, a couple of the guys were showing just personal, private videos that we shared with each other of video of, of uh, pictures that we have on the walls. And Dale's place looks like a bloody gallery. <laughs> it does. It looks good. <laughs> he's got a lot of pictures on his walls that he's taken, and I think that's yeah. so cool. But uh, and I yeah. could see this one. I could see this one mm -hmm. on somebody's wall. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I got room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is a this is right up there with the fifty with the blue caddy, Dave. No, that's how yeah. much I like this. Yep. One. And and Scott, if you that haven't seen the blue thank caddy, you. I've seen the blue caddy. Yes, have you seen <laughs> yeah. the beautiful photo? Yeah, it's, oh, it's thank the, you. The favorite picture that, that Dave's ever taken that I like the best. So yeah. it's it's really cool. That means a lot. Thank you. Uh, so, Dave, down by the yep. water. Down by the <clears> water. <throat> this is uh, out on a run. And it was getting close to sunset. And But it, but you can see the, um, the rowers out there. And there is a rowing club that has that uses the public docks. And I, I'm just out there. And this is using the, um, I'm trying to think of the, the mood camera. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and we, the we nice got a thing... thank you from him, by the way. Um, ah, cool. On, I think it was, was it our first live stream where we mentioned that? And first he left a comment second, in, the, yeah. in the video, I yeah. think. So I was yeah. saying thanks for mentioning the app and, and all that. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And like I said, I, I did. And just because you can't really undo the presets they have in it. I took one with the normal app too. Um, yeah. But I, I just like the mood it came out with. I didn't yeah. do much editing afterwards and the grain to it. Yeah. yeah. So it, I think it just added a nice grain. And the nice thing is with, with the app is when you set the preset, it kind of gives you a heads up of what the look may look like coming out. Yeah. So you're not just going blind like you see a filter called Tokyo and another yes. one called Istanbul. I'm like, what's that mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're making up random name. You're like famous cities. Great. What's it mean? But yeah. like uh, on this one, this was um, Apollo. Uh, and it even has like in the, in the photo itself, in the EXIF data it says Apollo 400 dash S. Oh, nice. So it gives you what the preset was. And I just love the fact that they were out there, you know, doing their thing, rowing. Couldn't hear the person in the uh, the, the regular boat yelling at them. But yeah, they, got they, they were just, yeah. 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 Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to the left. Yeah. But yeah. And, and honestly, the reason I, I kind of like the mood camera and cameras like that is like literally I was out on a jog and yep. it just happened upon it and they were moving. So if I had to do a lot of presets, do a lot of work, they'd be gone. 
Yeah. Just oh, knowing yeah. that, okay, there's seven or eight presets. Okay. Uh, which one, okay. That one looks good there. Take the photo. And it just, with the dock there and the poles coming out of it, I just liked how the, the whole scene was in the sun and the sky, just a little bit of sun. Yeah. As we're looking mm-hmm. to the West. Yeah. Yeah. I really like the mood of it. I mean, that, that mm-hmm. camera yeah. app is, it's got a good name. Yeah. Uh, and, and we'll put a link to the show notes uh, up for that app. Um, mm-hmm. If I can find it because it's a beta still, is it not Dave? Or is it? It is. Or yeah. It's still in beta, which, okay. which and they are updating the beta a good amount too. Yeah. So yeah, I've gotten like multiple, multiple yeah. updates. So that's, a, that's a definite positive for the developer. And, I have not had any issues with it, with it being yeah. in beta. I mean, I'm seeing changes that are UI changes, you know, that, so definitely, you know, trying to make it work easier and nicer, but mm-hmm. I haven't had a crash on me or, you know, hang up or do anything that's negative. Yeah. So if you like, the look that you got with film back in the days. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is, this is another good one to get. Uh, I'm and, curious and... if some of the names are of like, I know some of them are cities and stuff like that, but are some of them based off films, different films? Mm, I don't think in this, well, I think not so. really because like one, well, one's called gold, but well, that gives not, you gold. Did I have a gold? <laughs> I well, thought that it's was supposed, like Kodak yeah. gold. Well, yeah. it says warm golden hues, uh, ideal for bright sunny days. Okay. And then there's like yeah. an analog, which is kind of your 1970s camera. Uh, cine, which is orange for cinematic, metro, you know, okay. yeah, uh, so portrait, simple. noir. No, the, the whole reason I asked... Um, there was a video I was watching. Um, I don't know if it was The Verge or it might have been uh, Wave uh, Wavecast or um, uh, anyways. They were doing it on a film camera, and mm-hmm. they were talking about using different films to get different looks. And, and he said, "You know, use this film if you want this look." And and it had these kind of names to it and stuff like that. So that's mm. why I thought, well, maybe it's named after the type of film and stuff. And maybe film shooters would understand it more than non-film shooter. Yeah. Mm. That I'm not yeah. sure. That I'm not yeah. sure. Because honestly, the when I shot film, um, what I shot was the 110 camera okay. and the disc camera. Yeah. I used a wide, a wind up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Disposable. <laughs> or yeah. a Polaroid. I, I got my start on the 110. <laughs> oh yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's a good it's a good shot. I like I like the uh um yeah. the level of green that's in it. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. not too much and it's it's not too little. I think it yeah. really suits the um you know the, the style of the photo. So uh yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And let me see here. Our, the last one. This is another one from the waterfall, obviously. Uh, Beautiful. This one I used reheld. Or no, was it reheld or reflex? I'm not sure. Either one, uh, you could do the same thing. What I did was when I tapped the button to take the picture, if, if it was reflex, it was set to long exposure. I think it was reflex. And it was set for a, like a half second long exposure. But what I did was as soon as you tap the button, you tap it again. Okay, and you could yeah, co- actually get like a shorter, a shorter mm-hmm. exposure, like more like a quarter of a second. Yeah. And that, you know, again, um, really uh, accentuates the, the flow of the water um, without yeah. the braiding. And yes. it, you know, it, was, it was breezy. And this pine tree that's leaning over in the front, I, I think in, in, in um or maybe it's a cedar but in uh on the instagram post i said uh, the the tree looks like it's trying to photobomb leaning in for a photo yeah. <laughs> but uh um you know it was moving and by doing that real tap tap on the shutter it enabled yeah. me to get get the tree nice and still 
Um, in fact, I think down in this area here, those are watching live, if you look at my mouse pointer, I think down in here, there might be a little more movement yet. Mm. But the, the main yeah, part of maybe the thing right was, in, right at the base where it where it starts, you can see maybe just a little bit, but yeah, you're, you're yeah. it's it's different. still really crisp though. Pixel people. Yeah. 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 I, I was pleased with it. Um and I tried this a few times and this was the one that, that turned out the best. Um, but I, I like shake what I shoot a waterfall. I like, you know, there's one thing to get the whole waterfall, but yeah. then it's something else to be said about just isolating part of it. And um yeah, I cropped this four by five for Instagram. So there was actually a little more up top, but it, it's a point where the rocks changed uh, coloring or something. So I'm kind of glad I did crop it. Uh, it, yeah. it, it was kind of distracting. I like the way those, but, it looks like roots or vines coming down off and, and it just, mm -hmm. like you just follow them down into the water and, and uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, I love the motion of, of, uh, long exposure has to be my favorite type of, of photography. Um, it's just, yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. shot. It, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that's our recent photos. I don't think there's any more. No, that's it. Yeah. There we go. We get rid of that. Um, so let's just check in with the chat and see where, let's see who, who's saying what in there. Um, Let's see. I haven't seen it for a while. Uh, Carl K Kowalski <laughs> is in the house. Um, tuned in late, but could the issue of the raw engine, if darkroom isn't going... Uh, let's see here. Tuned in late, but could the issue with the raw engine, if darkroom isn't doing it, they use Apple's raw engine and Adobe uses their own? That's possible. Mm. Um I don't know enough about raw engines to know yeah. how that works. Yeah, me neither. Um, hmm. That could be that. That's an interesting point. Yeah, I guess the question is is try it out more to see if you can recreate it somehow, and and if it does show up in darkroom because you said it didn't, but I thought, I'm sure somebody said it did. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see it. Um, yeah. Hmm. It's interesting. I'll send you a maybe another photo, like a ceiling shot, and uh, without updating it, like just the raw and and throw it in darkroom and see if it does it. If you can, well, I I took some with mine uh, okay, yeah. of just like a real light wall, mm -hmm. you know, right. very yeah. similar to your ceiling shots, and I, I threw the same file right into darkroom, Lightroom, all that stuff, and. It showed up in Snapseed and Lightroom, but it didn't show up in, like I say, raw power didn't show up. Um, Darkroom, it didn't show up. And mm -hmm. I don't know if I have any other raw editors or not. Um, but yesterday when we were talking about this, I tried Camera M, I tried Halide, I tried um, Reflex. And I don't, oh, and, and I tried Camera Plus. Yeah. And all the raw files had it in it. So, you know, it's obviously not a camera app. So there's nothing that the that the uh, developers can do. Yeah. Um, but I mean, unless they know something about like, uh, like Carl says with the raw engines, maybe mm. there's, I don't know, maybe there's something to that. It'd be very interesting. So, hmm. yeah. Like I said, or, like I said earlier, it's good discussion to be had. And yep. um, the plot I'll, I'll be getting a hold of Chris Cohen and seeing if there's something that he can do to dig in. Wouldn't that be something if his first week at Apple he he found a fix for something like this? <laughs> <laughs> Give the man a raise. Uh, all right. Well, I guess we got ourselves a show. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Scott, tell everybody where they can find you. Oh, I'm, I like to hide. I don't want to be found. <laughs> uh, no, I'm on Twitter. Yeah, I'm on all the things. Uh, Twitter, I think, uh, at Roscoe P. Coltrane. Um, and uh, yeah, from there, you'll find me on Instagram and stuff like that. And I'm on all the social medias and stuff. So, Cool. 
Uh, and you're in the Facebook groups for the uh, iPhoneography podcast and yep. uh, Shane's Bloody Legends group. Um, There's so many groups. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's it, Dave. We're just reminding that everybody should know by now where they can find you. Yep. You can find me pretty much everywhere as Prof Pod, except for TikTok, where I'm Prof Pod PGH. All righty. Well, and you can find me in the Facebook group. Uh, same ones that uh, that Scott's in pretty much, and uh, on uh, Instagram and Threads is Macmillan Photo, and on X Macmillan underscore Photo. I don't post many pictures there, and there is an an iPhoneography community there that I run. It's yeah. not very active, mind you, but there's over three hundred people in it. Um, just debating on whether to keep it going or not because it's just another thing to look after. Um, so but you know, you can find me on glass and my name is just at Greg on glass and, um, uh, the links are in the show notes. You can find us all, you know, wherever we are. So, uh, all right. Well, thank you all to those in the, uh, in the chat room who are watching live on YouTube and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get this all sorted out eventually if we do it enough, um, to make it a more smoother start. But, um, you know, we do appreciate you watching and and uh, and thanks for those who are listening to the audio later on. And something new about the audio podcast, the, the podcast app from Apple, if you've updated your iPhone to iOS 17.4, you can actually read a transcript along with the audio. And that is really cool. So is, yeah. if there's something... Mm -hmm earlier say in the show that you might have missed you can search for certain words and yep. find them and that's that is really neat um yeah. and and it works in, in as far as i know i haven't checked the back catalog of ours to see how far back this goes but uh it's a really cool feature so if if you if you're listening on an iphone and you want to find something or read along um you know, it's there. It's really cool. So uh, anyway, on that note, um, I guess we'll say goodbye to the, the people in YouTube. And um, I guess we'll see you all in the next one. Have a great one, everyone. Thanks for tuning in.